Shalom and welcome to Two Minutes of Torah. This year is entitled Parshat Ki Teitze Yifatoar and Free Will. We're familiar with the uh, fascinating Chiddush of the Torah that a Chayal in certain situations would be allowed to marry a Gentile woman during the times of war. There are many restrictions, of course. It is not a simple permit. But so, so, if there is a heter in certain cases to marry a Gentile woman, the Rambam, the Hilch, and the Lachim Perachet writes that in Takfa Yitzro, his Yitzahara takes over him, then the Chayal is allowed to marry the woman with certain restrictions, of course. Uh, it's an amazing thing because we would say that uh, he has free will and he has a tremendous challenge in front of him, but he must overcome the challenge just like Jews always have to overcome challenges. That's what the six and the 13 mitzvahs are about. Something that needs to, needs to be analyzed. Another case that also requires analysis is the Ram Hecha Yisadi Torah writes about a person who at gunpoint is told to uh, serve idolatry or to kill someone. So we all know the halacha is he must give up his life and he must choose death. He has Bechira Chavshis, he has free will despite the tremendous pressure and he must choose death. What if he doesn't? What if he goes ahead? And if Chas Shalom he bows down to the Lord of Zara, or Chas Shalom he kills the other person under the threat of death, so if it's a horrible thing, it's a Chil Hashem, and if you have 10 people watching this Chil Hashem or Rabbim, yet the Beitin would not kill him. Why? Because it's honest. It's considered to be under duress. And the question is, why is it under duress? Under stress? Under pressure? Yes. But honest? The case of honest in the Torah is a woman who has for Shalom is raped, an Anusa, she has absolutely no choice. She is an Anusa. But the case of a Chayal in war, and the case of a person at death, uh, the threat of death at gunpoint, that's a lot of pressure. Uh, it's just, uh, not a simple challenge. But Anus, not simple to call these two Anus. Only the third category by the woman can we call Anusa. So maybe you could say the following, that normally we have free will. And how does free will work when we have a desire? It could be a tiny desire to eat before davening, a desire to go ahead and speak Lash and Hara, and then we have to overcome that desire. And in our psyche, we realize that there's a desire to do this, and it's wrong, and I need to overcome the desire. Then there are certain times, rare times, where the desire is not simply a desire, but as far as the psyche is concerned, it is a need. And this goes, it, it sort of short circuits the area of free choice and goes right to the conclusion there's an absolute need to be involved in this action. And in such a case, the Torah does look at him as an honest. And the two examples, the Yifat Torah case, this Chayal, he sees that woman, as far as he's concerned, it's not in reality a need, but as far as he's going to his psyche, it's not the normal process of a desire versus the ability to overcome the desire. His psyche is telling him he needs to be with this woman. And the Torah recognizes that there's such a case and it gives him a limited heta because otherwise he's going to do it for Isser. So too a person where he has at gunpoint, it's not simply a desire to stay alive. As far as his psyche is concerned, it may be a need. He needs to be alive and he'll do whatever he needs to do to follow that need of staying alive. It is wrong and it is a bad choice, but it's not a typical free choice case. And therefore, the halacha recognizes these two exceptional cases. Mir Hashem in the next Shia part two will analyze other examples where something may be considered a need and not simply a desire according to the halacha. Shalom.